Hi, and welcome back again. In this video, we'll be looking at a particular class of verbs called contract verbs. These are verbs that shake hands with their endings. What does that mean? Well, a contract verb is not a verb that signs a legal agreement. It's a verb whose ending contracts, gets shorter. The reason for this is that the stem for these verbs ends in a short vowel, alpha, epsilon, or omicron like du la o, where the stu stem is du la, pole o, where the stem is pole, hora o, where the stem is hora. When you add an ending then, two short vowels meet. Du la plus eta, omicron meets epsilon. Or you have a short vowel meeting a long vowel or diphthong. So we have pole, the epsilon, meeting the a diphthong in ace, or the alpha in hora, meeting the uh, omega of the first person singular ending. Fortunately, there are quite predictable patterns about how these uh, vowels combine or collapse together. So long vowels, like uh, eta or omega, or diphthongs like u or a, they will usually swallow up the short vowels at the end of the stem. Hora then, when you add the omega, will just become horo. Pole of poleo, when you add the usi, third person plural ending, since the omicron upsilon diphthong is uh, long by definition, polusi. Uh, is what results. The u just swallows up the epsilon. Likewise, when you have the short o omicron at the end of du la, and it meets the u on usi, it's swallowed up and we just have du lusi. But in one combination, the omicron upsilon will change. Uh, when you have an alpha, along with the omicron upsilon, they combine to make an omega. So hora plus usi will equal horosi instead of horusi. And in two combinations, the epsilon iota diphthong will be changed. Uh, if an alpha uh, meets the epsilon iota, the iota becomes a subscript underneath the alpha. So hara plus the a ending of the third person singular becomes hora with a, an iota subscript. And remember to type that iota subscript. Du la plus ace uh, changes slightly differently. Uh, the omicron, when it meets the a diphthong, becomes oi. So we have, instead of du lace, we have du lois. These uh, patterns of combination can be represented by this chart here, where you can see that omega always swallows up uh, any of the short vowels. Uh, the u, omicron upsilon diphthong, uh, usually swallows up uh, a short vowel except for alpha, where it uh, combines to become omega. And the epsilon iota uh, it really only swallows up the epsilon. Epsilon seems to be the weakest uh, of the short vowels. And instead, when it meets alpha, we get the alpha with iota subscript. And when it meets omicron, we get oi. Now, what happens when two short vowels meet? Usually, what happens is that they combine to form one long vowel or a diphthong. Uh, so, uh, the omicron in du la, when it meets the epsilon of eta, uh, the omicron and the epsilon become uh, an omicron upsilon diphthong, u. So we have du luta instead of du leta. Uh, that omicron, when it meets another omicron, uh, becomes a long O class vowel, and we have du lomen. Uh, similarly, when an epsilon meets an epsilon, like in pole and eta, 
the epsilons combine to make the epsilon iota diphthong, and we have polate. Uh, the epsilon on pole, when it meets the omicron of the omen first person plural ending, uh, again becomes an u diphthong, and we have polumen. And hora plus omen gives us horomen. And we can represent these uh, in a nice chart over here once again. As you can see in the chart, the only place where a short vowel uh, meeting another short vowel doesn't re uh, result in a long vowel or diphthong is when alpha at the end of the stem meets epsilon at the beginning of the ending. In that case, the alpha at the end of the stem just overpowers the epsilon of the ending. So when we have hora plus the eta ending of the second person plural, uh, what results is horata instead of horeta. But when alpha in the ending meets epsilon at the end of the stem, the epsilon lengthens to eta. An epsilon and an epsilon uh, create the a uh, diphthong, an omicron at the end of the stem plus an epsilon in the ending create an u. Uh, alpha at the end of the stem plus an omicron uh, result in a long o, o, the omega. Uh, epsilon plus omicron uh, again uh, becomes u, and omicron plus omicron becomes a long o, omega. One thing you have to realize with uh, contract vowels, uh, verbs then is that the dictionary form of the verb is artificial. When you learn the verb poleo, unlike with most verbs, you're not really learning the actual first person singular uh, form of the verb. When I say I sell, I don't say poleo, I say polo. And when I say I see, I don't, don't say horao, I say Haro. Um, why do we use these artificial dictionary forms? Just to remind ourselves that these are contract verbs and uh, remind ourselves what the contracting uh, uh, short vowel is so that we'll be able to work out the right endings. You can learn more about Greek contract verbs in Mounts's Basics of Biblical Greek and as usual I've provided the section and page numbers to the third edition.